exciting developments are on the horizon as we eagerly await Flight 7. While preparations are complete, a brief delay keeps us anticipating its launch. In contrast, Blue Origin continues to face setbacks, with New Glenn repeatedly delayed even as planned timelines approach. This highlights the growing gap with SpaceX, which recently achieved a new milestone in reusability with the Falcon 9. Across the Atlantic, the European Space Agency is navigating a slight budget reduction, prompting questions about the factors behind this shift. Join us as we explore these updates and more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Excitement is building for the seventh flight test of Starship, not just because of its new tasks and upgrades, but also due to anticipation surrounding its scheduled launch date. The January 13th launch date previously announced is no longer accurate. Instead, SpaceX updated its plans on Sunday, stating, now targeting Wednesday, January 15th for the seventh flight test of Starship. This update was also reflected on the company's official website. This slight delay means the launch is now set for midweek. However, there's little cause for concern as this timeline remains well within two months of Flight 6. The adjustment is likely due to weather-related factors, ensuring the safety and success of this mission, especially when SpaceX plans to catch the Super Heavy Booster using the Megazilla arm and deploy payloads for the first time, justifies the additional weight. A brief delay now could make the eventual liftoff all the more thrilling. Taking advantage of the extra time, SpaceX has continued refining its systems following the wet dress rehearsal test. On the morning of January 11th, the ship transport stand arrived at the launch pad and S-33 was subsequently destacked from B-14. This procedure allowed SpaceX teams to conduct final checks and adjustments. On S-33, workers focused on tile inspections and the catching system. While B-14 underwent minor system updates, including replacing the cowbell vent covers, by the morning of January 12th, the work appeared complete, and S-33 was restacked onto B-14. It's highly likely that this configuration will remain intact until launch day. Should SpaceX be unable to proceed with the January 15th launch, alternative opportunities remain available. An NOTAM alert issued by the FAA for Starship Flight 7 covers a window extending from January 9th to January 17th. This suggests SpaceX has at least two more potential launch dates in reserve. However, any backup launch attempt will depend on how far the fueling process progresses during a given countdown. Refueling Starship is a time-intensive process, requiring several days to replenish nearly 11 million pounds of liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellant. As is the case with all developmental testing, the schedule is dynamic and likely to change, so be sure to check in here and stay tuned to our X account for updates, SpaceX wrote in its Flight 7 overview. With so much at stake, patience is key. Stay tuned and prepare for an unforgettable milestone in space exploration. Now, let's dive into the core topic, the New Glenn mission. As of the time this video was created, Blue Origin had yet to launch its much-anticipated debut mission. Unfortunately, the preparation for this launch has been nothing short of chaotic. Originally scheduled for January 10th, the mission was postponed to the 12th and then again to the 13th. These delays are just a few of the many that have plagued Blue Origin since its inception. Even with the launch date so near, Blue Origin has repeatedly pushed back the launch hour. By my count, as of this video, the company has delayed the launch no fewer than six times. The stated reason for these delays is a vehicle subsystem issue, but the constant setbacks are quickly turning the company into a source of ridicule. Despite these challenges, Blue Origin is determined to land and deploy its payload on this maiden flight. A successful launch could mark a significant turning point, allowing the company to enter the reuse race pioneered by SpaceX's Falcon rocket. It might even help Blue Origin shed its suborbital company label. However, it'll take an extraordinary effort for New Glenn to compete with Falcon rockets. On the payload side, launching Blue Ring is a critical step for New Glenn to gain launch certification from the United States Space Force. 
This certification would enable it to undertake military and government missions. However, the lack of experience in orbital launches and landing on a drone ship presents considerable risks. After this debut mission, Blue Origin has a busy schedule ahead. The second mission for New Glenn will involve launching NASA's Mars spacecraft Escapade. Although the exact launch date remains unclear, Blue Origin cannot afford delays, as Mars launch windows only occur every two years. Following this, New Glenn will also take on missions to deploy Kuiper satellites. A promising future seems possible for Blue Origin and New Glenn as they aim to challenge SpaceX's dominance. However, achieving this goal will be an uphill battle. SpaceX's Falcon 9 remains the world's most launched rocket with over 400 flights and an extraordinary record of nearly 400 landings and reuses. So, do you believe New Glenn's debut flight will mark a turning point for Blue Origin this year? Share your answer, yes or no, in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like the video as well as subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's remarkable journey in revolutionizing space exploration. Indeed, Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket is unable to compete with SpaceX's Falcon 9, which continues to dominate with its unparalleled reusability record. On the 10th of January at 2.11 p.m. Eastern, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 mission from SLC-40 in Florida to deploy Starlink satellites into orbit. Shortly after, SpaceX confirmed the successful deployment of the satellites. However, the highlight of the mission was the landing of the Falcon 9 booster. After just over 8 minutes, Booster B-1067 made a precise landing on the drone ship JRTI, or just read the instructions, which features an advanced water deluge system for operations at sea. This marked the 106th successful landing on the JRTI drone ship and the 395th landing for SpaceX's fleet overall, inching closer to the milestone of 400 total booster landings. More impressively, this mission achieved a groundbreaking feat the 25th successful launch and landing of a single Falcon 9 booster within a single year. B-1067 has become the leading booster among all Falcon 9 boosters, solidifying its position as the most reused rocket stage in the world. After the flight, SpaceX announced on social media, Falcon 9 completes the first 25th launch and landing of a booster and delivers 21 Starlink satellites to the constellation from Florida. Musk himself celebrated this achievement with the tweet, First booster has reached 25 flights. This unprecedented milestone further distinguishes Falcon 9 and SpaceX from all competitors. With this success as a foundation, SpaceX is confidently pushing for a new benchmark, achieving 40 launches with a single booster. Behind B-1067, several other Falcon 9 boosters are rapidly amassing impressive reuse records, making the goal of 40 flights not only feasible, but increasingly imminent given SpaceX's growing launch cadence. While Falcon 9 continues to push the boundaries of reusability, anticipation grows for SpaceX's Starship, which promises to elevate the concept of reusability to a whole new level. Starship aims to achieve full reusability with the first step likely coming with Flight 8, set to launch in early 2025. This milestone is eagerly awaited as Starship's operational debut will redefine the economics of space exploration. Turning to Europe, the European Space Agency is grappling with a new challenge, budget reductions for the year of 2025. Right at the beginning, ESA announced that its budget would decrease to 7.68 billion euros, or 7.91 billion US dollars, a 1.4% reduction from 2024's 7.79 billion euro budget. According to ESA Director General Josef Oschbacher, this adjustment is intended to accommodate increased funding needs for critical programs over the next three years. ESA's budget is sourced from direct contributions by member countries and additional funding from external organizations. Notably, Germany, the United Kingdom, and Italy are experiencing the most significant cuts in this budget cycle. Despite the reduction, Oshbacher remains optimistic that adjustments in the coming weeks could allow the agency to reach a projected budget of 8 billion euros by the end of 2025.
ESA's streamlined budget reflects its focus on advancing key initiatives, including developing a commercial cargo spacecraft led by Thales Alenia Space and the Exploration Company, building a new European launch pad, and planning a mission to the Apophis asteroid. Additionally, ESA is strengthening its rocket program with the Vega C rocket, which was set to resume operations in December of 2024 after a two-year hiatus alongside the highly anticipated Ariane 6 rocket expected to debut this year, bolstering Europe's position in the global space industry. Despite these strides, ESA is unlikely to surpass the space dominance of the United States and China. The agency's progress highlights its intent to remain a significant player, but budget reductions could constrain projects and delay timelines. The coming months will test ESA's ability to adapt to these financial challenges while pursuing its ambitious goals. The future of space exploration will be dynamic, with each player striving to innovate and stay relevant. This has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for tuning in, and until next time, keep looking up.